you so much for tuning in to She's All Over the Place with Kiriaki. That's me. Welcome back. I am so excited to share today's topic with you. We're going to be talking about self-care and 2023 with Nicole Janton. Nicole, welcome to the show. How are you? I am amazing. Thank you so much for having me on. I'm really excited for this conversation with you. Yay, me too. Uh, I told the listener at the beginning of the season that uh, we're having co-hosts on uh, for the season. So I welcome you as my fellow Scorpion, fellow podcaster, uh, co-host with me on She's All Over the Place. Yeah, that's awesome. So exciting. Yay. So we are now in the top 1.5% out of almost 4 million podcasts, which is amazing. And also we are recording video. So if you want to pop over to YouTube, the link is below and you can just click and see how flawless Nicole's looking today. Yes. And you too, Katie, the makeup... (laughs) <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, shout out to my girl, Sia Shells. She is a real life mermaid. She goes by Sia, S-I-A, Shells, S-H-E-L-L-S on Instagram. She actually um, hooked me up with a bunch of makeup. She was with me um, during our Basel in Miami at the end of 2022. And um, she just like a couple different times, like these people just like give her all these makeups and she just like gifted some to me. So I feel very blessed and feminine and it's really apropos to, you know, the top topic of today of self care, because I'll just jump right into it. One of the ways I am doing self care is putting makeup on because I have like, you know, this natural look about me. Everyone's always told me like, Oh, you look better with makeup. Like I used to like feel like a clown growing up wearing makeup, like it made me look older, it made me feel intimidated with my own powers, you know, like we women are so powerful. And it's so cool to be diverse with dressing up and you know, wearing different jewelries and different dresses and and whatever we want to wear in whichever way. But like literally I've showed up to so many podcasts just like rolling out of bed with like no makeup on like just having that confidence to know like I'm flawless no matter what the point is I showed up so yeah um what's one way of that you're taking care of yourself right now or that's worked for you or something that your mom taught you when you're a little or your grandma or someone that they taught you that you implement today? Yeah, I'd say one of the big things is really just always asking myself the question, how can I be kind to myself? Because I think a lot of the time when we think about self care, it's like, oh my gosh, I have to do this. I got to get to the gym. If I don't get my hair done perfectly, then you know, I got to have my makeup done or all these things. And when we make it a have to, then it becomes so much less of self care. So whatever is going on, I always just try to say, how can I be kind to myself in this moment? Wow, I really love that. And what popped up for me is um, our friend, his name's Shaman Harry Paul. You can Google him. He's in LA. He's a shaman. And he replaces the have to with get to. I get to do this. I get to wake up today. I get to breathe. I get to do this. Because when people are like, I have to, it's so detrimental. And it's like life or death. And it's that extreme pressure that we put on to ourselves, whether it's personal or professional, like I have to. So like he taught me that years ago. And when I hear someone saying that, I always shift the altercation in the language to say you get to do that. And then half the people were like, Oh, yeah, like, yeah, thanks. Like I get to do that. You know, it, it really just takes the pile of heaviness off. I love that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's so good. Yeah. And also, you know, in regards to being kind, like Gary V, Gary Vaynerchuk, I love him. He's like, I was at VCon last year, Snoop was there, like Pharrell was there, so many people, it was so dope. And he's like, there's so much noise out there. There's so much noise out there that they're winning. Like, there's so much toxic crap out there. And the people who are kind, the people who are sophisticated and elevated, who take the high road, they kind of move in silence. They just kind of don't say anything. He says, we are the ones that actually need to speak up, like get loud. Like it's not boastful or it's not bragging. Like I'm happy. Like we need more joy in the world. We need more kindness in the world. So by saying like, I'm happy, like this makes me feel so good. Like this is awesome. And and like it's sharing our kindness is sharing our flowers. It's sharing the gifts, like the virtues of life. So the topic of being kind in self-care is so, so important. Like, how do you feel about it? 
Yeah, for sure. I mean, even what comes to mind for me is a lot of the time when we were kids, we were like, oh my gosh, I'm so excited to be able to drive a car, to be able to go do the, you know, go to work, to have a job and all these things. And now we're like, ugh, I have to go drive to work or I have to go, you know, to such and such event. So I love that reframe that you had of from, you know, having to do it to getting to do it. Yeah, I also like what you said because it's like now so many people complain about social media and like so many people are like oh my god like all these apps or blah 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 and it's like remember the days when you like wish you could have a phone I have a 13 year old nephew he just turned 13 he's so sweet he got a phone finally at like 10 or 11 he had it taken away in the first week like he could not have a phone he does not have a phone like he can't even be on wi-fi like he can only be on the lap on the laptop for school only but like he is yearning just to play Minecraft and like, you know, all the cool things like he just wants to have a phone just so he can like message me and talk to me and connect with me. And it's like, I know I, I've been off social media for like three months. I have no apps on my phone. I just downloaded the Twitter app, Katie Chinakis, if you want to follow me. And uh, it's all like Web3 Alpha, like NFT community and things of that nature. And, you know, yeah. And it's like, I had to like physically detox, you know, mentally detox. You know, that's a part of my self care is like, I'll go into that. But it's like, yeah, just by you saying that made me remember like, you know, how far am I going to take this? Yeah, it's good to uh, shift, pivot, take breaks, do what we got to do. But like the excitement of like driving a car, the excitement of like being on a phone and like the availability to do that. Like, and I think people listening can probably and probably already thought in their own mind, like, oh, like here, here is something that I thought about when Nicole and Katie said this. So if that's you, um, go to the link below and you can write on chinakas.com. There's a link where it says contact and um, put in your thoughts. I want to hear your thoughts and what we're doing every week. We're gifting things to the listeners. So it could be an NFT, a non-fungible token. It could be a, a track, a signed autograph, 30 minutes with me on any topic, being a podcaster, voiceovers, on acting, photography, travels, like anything you want to talk about. So we have weekly giveaways now, which is really exciting for season five. So definitely go to the link below. Make sure you're subscribing to the podcast, share with one person and just go to contact, write your thoughts to us about topics you want to hear about and enter for the giveaway. Okay, just put in the ha um, in the subject line giveaway and then uh, your topic that inspired you from what we just shared about health care, self care, <laughs> health care, <laughs> health care, <laughs> self care. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Okay. Oh, speaking of podcasters, um, Nicole, why don't you tell the listener about your podcast? Yeah, for sure. So my podcast is called Anxious and Ambitious, and we really have powerful conversations about mental health and how we can work with our mental health and take care of ourselves and nurture our nervous systems while we're doing these big ambitious things. I felt like a lot of the dialogue around anxiety and mental health was filled with great tips, but a lot of it was just focus on getting through it and coping. And I really wanted to talk about how we can actually leverage that and turn it into excitement. Yeah, I have a great guest for you. Her name's Sheila Darcy. She is an artist and she's like 1000% into mental wellness. She's like a boss. I'm gonna I'm gonna tell her so she can um, be on your show one second. Yeah, that sounds awesome. I'd love to chat with her. What's up, Sketch? Kiriaki here. I'm doing a podcast live with my friend Nicole, who has her podcast, and it's all about uh, mental wellness. And I just thought of you, of course, as I always do. And I'm going to connect you too, so you can be on her podcast. She's amazing. You'll love her. Okay, love you. Bye. Cool. Well, we'll set that up and make that happen. Mm, awesome. And so another thing about self care I want to implement is whether it's personal or, or business to take action If something if you have an idea and it takes 10 minutes or less like something I learned when I was a child. I wish like I remember who taught me this but if it takes me 10 minutes or less I do it right then and there like I just did it on our live podcast, you know, because I have the thought and I want to make it happen. So I put it into action. And that's how like I can do self care for myself instead of having like all these piled to do lists and all these piles of things to do. So I think that's like a really cool, amazing tip for self care that um, I do for myself. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, that's a great idea. And that just makes me think of the importance of actually, you know, doing self care 
every single day instead of I think a lot of the time we try to save it for like, oh, I have a vacation coming up or the weekends coming or I have this stretch of days off. But I don't know about you. But every time something like this happens, I mean, just before the holidays, I was going on vacation and I get sick because it's like I'm running myself towards this break, this finally this time where I can have self care and then you neglect self care along the way. Yeah, well, I think what happens is it's mind over matter. And like you psychologically tell yourself, okay, this is going to be my time to relax and rejuvenate and do nothing. And so like, when you get to that point of like, okay, like I'm here, your body feels safe because you had a a conversation and a relationship to say, okay, it's time to like open up my vessel. So when we open, we get sick because we're letting out the toxins. We've been holding the toxins in so tight because mind over matter and not allowing ourselves to get sick. So I was wildly, I went to LA one way on July 20th. (laughs) Like the vibes were so good. I was just there. I was just there one way and I was spinning around, running around, doing so many things that we can talk about or not. I was then one way going to uh, our Basel. And then after one way, our Basel is going to be in Miami. I'm like, yo, I'll go to my condo in New York. So I came to my condo in New York in December and I'm like, I'm just going to spend the rest of the year resting, unwinding. And for me personally, which you know, uh, my Greek Christmas is the 7th, my Greek New Year's is the 14th. So when everyone gets back like a week earlier, I don't, I'm still like in rest mode. So I take like a proper full like month, you know, to really unwind and relax. Uh, I do have a funny story that we may share or not here, but (laughs) about what happened. But when that happened, I was like, really, really looking forward to it. And for me, it was going going to be just lighting candles, rearranging my home, like going through my clothes, going through my jewelry, listening to audiobooks, taking baths and just like looking at my view and just like being in solitude and silence with myself to like get to know me again because I gifted all of my time and my energy to so many people throughout the year and I was like meeting a lot of people for the first time too, you know, Twitter spaces or even like clubhouse days where we're all like connecting and, and doing things on, you know, the Zoom and things of that nature. So uh, it was a really, really exciting time. And it was really, really fun. My family went to Greece. And, you know, they were like, etching and etching for me to go there. And they even went to Spain. And I said no, because I had a trip planned to Denver with Future Shape 360, a Web3 Summit. And then my girlfriend, who's on the season finale, Natasha Granciano, she's on the season finale of season four. She had her her book signing in LA and I committed that I would be there. And I'm like a commitment person like you because you're a Scorpio. So you're loyal, like very committed. And I made a commitment by breaking that commitment. Maybe I was too hard on myself, but see, being hard on myself, maybe I was too hard on myself. But I felt like I was being swayed every which way by like what other people wanted. And you know, the people pleasing syndrome that I chose not to go to an all paid everything all expenses paid trip to Greece. And they were sending me photos and videos and like, you know, wanting me to come there and just like begging me to actually come like crying, like wanting me to come. And I didn't because I had to like prove something to myself, like I'm doing something for me. And I, I was like, you know, on like seven to like eight stages in 20 2022 uh, conferences, PodFest, you know, I was speaking there, how podcasters can pivot into NFTs and blockchain and educating people. Then since I was 14, I always wanted to, you know, be on stages talking with people. And that's like for another time or another story. But the thing is, like I said, no, and it wasn't about like, it, it would have been great. But it's like, I, I've been there and it's beautiful. And you know, one of my friends, he's like, nah, you shouldn't miss up that opportunity. You shouldn't miss that opportunity. You're like, you should go. But I was so on a run that I made the commitment. And whether it's right or wrong, I made the commitment. And whether I feel now, because I did it in the moment, like a little bit of regret or wondering if I should have gone, like I remember to remember why I made that choice. And I made that choice because I wanted to make a commitment to myself and be there for myself. And I really took like the bull by the horn to like really propel myself forward. So I'm happy I did that. However, I want to share, this is like the main point of the story. For the first time in my life, I felt burnt out. I have so much energy. Everyone's like, how do you do what you do, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like going, going, going and exuding all this energy and not realizing like how much quote unquote could be wasted. I don't think energy is wasted. It's like, it doesn't matter if it's good or bad. It's just energy. But I've really felt my body 
my my body, my spirit like felt. So I like went to the nose from like July to like November 28th when I went to our Basel. And then our Basel, then there was like this whole thing, which is another podcast or another story. But there was this whole thing where like, I felt it like I felt it. I was like, Oh my gosh, like, so that's why this season is 16 episodes as of right now or 16 weeks, because normally I do 23 episodes. And last season, like, I think we did like 33, like the women empowerment series, there were so many beautiful stories to share of all these international women all around the world. I'm like, how is this series ever going to end? But it did. But then I like I took time off the podcast, but I ran hard from July to the end of November in LA. And and then I felt burnt out and the repercussions of it afterwards. So like, you know, let's talk about some of those tools and things that we could do or that I did or that you've done. If have you ever felt burnt out before? Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I, t- I totally know what you're talking about. And I think something there that was so powerful that you said is that you said no, because a lot of us, we want to be people pleasers. We want to be givers. We want to give as much of our energy. And we think that saying no is like cutting us off from an experience, you know, we sometimes have the the FOMO that comes up. But something that somebody, a guest actually on my podcast said to me was when you say no, you're actually saying yes. Because when you say no to something, you're saying yes to someone else. Yeah. When you say, when you say no, you're saying yes to yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When I say no, it's like a dot. I always look at it like visually like a domino effect. Yeah, I love that. So the thing I want to acknowledge the fork in the road when I said no, which is all those acclimates that we're talking about, right? For the trajectory of, you know, this vision of my life, my anchor, my ship being the captain. However, because of the repercussions and the burnt out I felt, I reflected, what if I, it was just, it was at the top. It was at, it was at the top of me being in LA, although LA would always be there. But I wonder if I would, I do. So let's talk about it. Like, I wonder if I would have gone and I would have this experience and it would have been wonderful and it would have broken up some stuff, which would have been very healthy on a personal level. Then maybe would I have not been so burnt out because I ran myself ragged, right? So the timing was a bit off because I was ecstatic about LA and like the vibes because you know, I went to LA at the end of 2001 and like I left in 2018 to, you know, travel the world again and then got a condo in New York and became bi-coastal and then the pandemic happened. So like I wasn't in LA for a while while like that and the vibes were so good like a, a cleansing and energetic cleansing and the vibes were so good with the people so so excited so I stayed to play and so I don't regret it you know the accolades and all the things I did is amazing and probably for another podcast but but I do wonder because like you know it was family and that's also a thing it's like it's family which is 1000% important but also, it's like I wanted to like, like I said, have this mission to propel forward in a certain way as a like a new business owner, as, as an artist after, you know, coming out of the pandemic and after like dismantling from uh, a relationship that was a journey and then ultimately toxic. So I did what I did. That That is what it is. But yeah, I wonder if, you know, I went and had that experience. This is it. If I wonder if I went and had that experience, then how would the trajectory have been after? Would I have been like lost at sea and lost that momentum? that I was so close to, I I feel yes. So like, I still feel like I made the choice that was the choice, whether it's right or wrong or weak or strong. It's in my instincts and it's in my nature, which I think is important for self-care to be able to, no matter what anyone else thinks or says, to be able to listen to that instinctual voice and that thing within and we learn from it. So now I learned, okay, so how, what are, can we learn from it? Okay. So instead of doing 23 episodes, I'm committing to 16. Maybe we will go, you know, um, a few weeks over 16 weeks, but I am committing to 16 weeks and I'm letting the listener know, or you know, the listener, the viewer watching, like we're doing 16 weeks. And so make it, cause I'm a commitment person as a Scorpio. I know you're a loyal commitment person too. So making a commitment, but not only committing first committing to myself, right? Which I did by staying and not going, then feeling the thing of a burnt out and then doing um, women's floras, ashwagandha, you theory's an amazing brand, organic, family owned, made local in America in Southern California, just a big fan. They don't sponsor the show yet. But so like, that's really important for me and making that commitment to myself and, and being realistic, like, yeah, I could go 23 episodes, but I'm going to 
do 16 because I don't want to like go past that threshold because I don't want to feel what I felt. And just thinking about it, I feel that aching inside. So one, right? And then when I'm in podcast season, I'm only focusing on podcasts and culture kids, which is, you know, my acting project that I'm doing. So what are some boundaries that you've set for yourself for self care that you need to do that you aspire to do? So you have those good boundaries for yourself. So when you're your best self, then you can be the best for other people who look to you for support and help. Yeah, I think one of the big things is really just figuring out what are these commitments that I'm making? Because as you Said. Like as a Scorpio, I'm loyal. I want to make these commitments. But then I also have that people pleaser part of me that comes in and wants to say yes to everything. And the fact of the matter is you can't say yes to everything and commit to everything and put 100% of your energy into everything. And I have tried to do that. I've burnt out from it. I end up feeling so much more anxious and stressed and, and not able to show up. So this year, my intention is to really just be intentional about everything I do. Really thinking is how is this serving, of course, everyone else, because we all want to, you know, serve the world in some type of way. But how is this also serving myself? And how is me maybe saying no to this going to serve me and these other endeavors so much more than just trying to, you know, be the yes girl and, and spread myself too thin? I love that. And then um, Jason Okuma, he's a consultant. He's a friend of mine, and he's going to be on the show later in the season. We've had many discussions. And one of the things we're going to talk about all the gems when he's on the show, but one of the things he says to me, there was an event happening in Venice and they wanted me to be at a part of it. They were doing like all these things. And he sat down to me and he could see that I really wanted to go in a, in a way. And because we had plans with him, but this other thing came up and we ended up going together. Like that's how cool he is. Like we ended up going together. I invited him. It was a, it was a chill experience. But what he taught me then and what I implement in everything moving forward when I do anything, is it serving them or is it serving me? Is it serving them or is it serving me? Is it serving them and not me? No. Is it serving me and not them? Then I if I want to, yeah. Is it serving me and them? Cool. But it has to serve me. And what comes up is selfishness, right? Oh, do I want to talk to this person because it's good for me? Oh, okay. You're only talking to me because it's good for you. But how do you intentionally bring value to that thing? That's good for you as well. Like it's good for me, but you know, I'm not being an, an opportunist here, but like, hey, X, Y, and Z, this is who I am. These are my ideas. Like, do you align and vibe with any of these things? Communicate, a healthy communicator and like be real and raw with it. But if we're not real and raw with it, then then we'll never know. Then we're just going to beat up on ourselves and not be nice to ourselves about it, right? So it's that fine line. Like, so moving forward, it's like, who do I want on my show? What do I want to do? Like, how do I want to spend my days, right? So I'm in season right now, which is really exciting. I get to like dress up, like look like floss and boss and like feel good and like, you know, girly and divine femininity. And that makes me feel really good in my power. It's um for self-esteem, right? So there's like people get confused a lot about like confidence and self-esteem. They're different. So like one can appear to be confident. Some people are loud. Some people like, ha ha. You know, some people like are over talkative. Ha like some people are just like on this train of confidence and they they look at the person like, oh my God, that person's like so confident, but, but they could have like a really low self-esteem. So how do we build self-esteem, right? Mm -hmm. So it's that feeling that feels good, no matter what like anyone else says, like if it makes us feel good, that's building confidence. It can be the simplest thing. Like I'm going to go do the mail or not do the mail. <laughs> I'm going to go do the laundry. I'm going to go do the laundry. And then if I do it, I like feel good. Oh, I'm folding my clothes. Yeah, that like ticks uh, the self-esteem because all we have is our vibrations, our thought and our words and our commitment. Like we're going to do X, Y, and Z. But if I say I'm going to do the laundry and I don't do it and I'm like, I'll do it tomorrow. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to do the laundry and I, I don't do it the next day. And then like two weeks goes by or like a month goes by and like I don't have a housekeeper and like the laundry's not done. You're, I'm ticking at my self-esteem like, oh, you're not going to do it. Like you negative back self-talk like I don't how can I trust myself to do something when I actually can't even like just do the laundry which is sometimes like a big thing I'm depleting my own self-esteem because I'm not honoring the commitment and the word that I'm gifting to myself and so I would say and what I do is I check in with myself and like the things that I do and commit with myself like those small things that people think are small, but those are actually the macro things that are like really important. And Caroline Mice, M-Y-S-S, she's a mystic intuitive. She talks about that. She has a TED talk on choices and it's about the macro choices and the micro choices, how the micro choices make up our lives, which are actually the macro. 
Yeah. And I think it's huge there that you mentioned how such small little things can actually be the huge catalyst in growing your confidence. And I feel like you're triggering even to me a little bit. I hope to some of the listeners here too, of I got back from my trip. I still have laundry and stuff to do because we, this is what we do, right? We give ourselves in all these different directions. I'm like prioritizing the podcast, prioritizing work, prioritizing business. And you just forget about these little things. I mean, it's also winter. I'm in Canada here and I don't need my summer dresses that I wore on the trip. But still, it's a matter of, of keeping that promise to yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And <laughs> and also like giving ourselves a break, like, okay, like, it's not that important. Okay, like, I want to do it, but I actually don't feel like doing it. So it's just gonna sit there for a few weeks. And that's just the vibe. But like, at least you play and have a conversation with yourself about that back and forth, which I think is really important. It's like the analogy I give to my coaching clients, like there's a trampoline, and I'm going to jump on the trampoline, and I'm having so much fun. And I fall instead of berating myself like you fell and I'm screaming at myself. You know, I'm kind to myself like it's okay. Kay, you fell. You knew you were going to fall like it's okay. Get back up and start jumping. And I start jumping and I fall and I'm like, I'm not laughing at myself. Ha you fell. It's like, ha you fell. It's all right. Like get back up and let's go. And then I'm jumping again and then I fall again. And then it becomes more like lighter and more fun to go back and forth. So I do that in my personal and I do that 1000% of my business because I'm like such a workaholic that I definitely need to really, for me, I need to put that into my business more because on a personal level, I feel um, it's just different for me. For for business, I definitely uh, need to remind myself, you know, because I'm like a Ferrari. Rawr. You know what I mean? I need to like, yo, <laughs> <laughs> you look like a Ferrari. <laughs> yeah, flawless. Oh, thanks. If you did have a Ferrari, which one would it be? Oh, you know what? I'm. This sounds horrible, but I'm not really a car girl. I can't even oh. tell you what Ferrari I would have, but I can tell you I would want it to be red. <laughs> yeah, I was. Just, that's what I mean. Like, what color? Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, 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 I want my like metallic. I think mm. I like the how my eyes look. That would be cool. Yeah, like a metallic blue, like turquoise, like this, but like metallic, like mm. gunmetal, which would be cool. Yeah. yeah, or I'll just take a Bugatti. <laughs> yes, please. Yeah. <laughs> but just yeah. like bringing it back for a second to that story that you told about the trampolines, because I think <laughs> this highlights like such an important thing of it's important, these stories that we tell ourselves and these words that we give to ourselves. And this brings it back to self care too, right? Because let's say you committed, you know, 2023, I'm going to go to the gym every day or, or something like that. Well, oftentimes, if we make that mistake, we're like so hard on ourselves, and it stops us from ever moving forward and doing the thing again. And instead of just accepting the fact that, yes, I am a human being and I'm doing my best. And how can I be kind to myself in this moment? Yeah. Right. I love that. I love that. And, you know, with that being said, I'm just going to be full transparent because if I keep it in, this is important for self-care too. If I keep it in and I don't say it or if I'm embarrassed and I just like don't talk about it, it's like a monster. It has power over you. But once you like talk about it, then it like shape shifts and everything changes. Like it, it happened. And I won't give the example because it's something different. But the example I will give is like, yo, I cannot get to a gym. Like I really cannot get to a gym. Like I, I can't even tell you, like I can probably tell you the last time I was at a gym, but like it's years. That's the one thing I need is to like work out and be in a gym. And it's just, I ran cross country. I used to run 50 miles a week. Like I was the fastest runner in Michigan, six of the nation, like full runner. My body's like an 18 year old. I'm not kidding. Because like, I don't have kids yet, God willing, one day soon. But the thing is, I don't need my kids to be like the next Anna Kornikova or like, you know, basketball player or football player. However, I think the foundational sports aspect for children to build your framework while your body's developing, it's so important for my children in the near future to be athletes. 1000% like I need to have them be athletes because it just gives you this physicality and it gifted me. My dad was a cross country runner, so he turned me on to it when I was a kid. But it gave me short term, medium term and long term goals. Like I have all this like foresight and I play the long game. I mean, why do you think I started my podcast at the end of 2019? And I wanted to start, you know, nine years before that. I didn't know how to get on the train tracks. And now we're in the top 1.5%. The second season, we were in top 5%. And now we're in the top 1.5%. And this season, I know we're going to be in the top 1%, period, hands down. And the thing is, because I have this drive and this motivation and this knowing and this belief, that gives me the inner strength and confidence 
you know, because I have that. And so the listener tuning in, whatever that is for you, it might not be cross country, but it's something that you know, that you know, that you know, that you know, deep down, and you can write about it, or you just know it. And you just like ignored yourself so many times that like, you don't even trust yourself or believe yourself because you've heard it like it's not going to happen. Like it, it won't happen. Like you're too old or whatever like that. So whatever that is for you, like that's what it is for me. And like, I remember to remember to listen to myself because I went on a journey while I was a people pleaser. Like one of there's two reasons why this is called She's All Over the Place podcast. One is because I was people pleasing. I went around the world and I would ask multi-billionaires and millionaires, like, how do I be successful? Jump, how high? Run for how long? Like, what do I have to do? Left, right, in between. And I did it all. Like for over 10 years, I did it all. I was a people pleaser, jumping up and down. And I lost myself. I like lost my mojo. I like lost my own voice. I like lost. And I then I went through this journey of like finding myself again in a whole new way because we can't we're not going back. We're not going back. There's no going back. But how can I meet myself where I am now and collect the gems that I liked from myself prior and put them to where we are now? Because there's no going back. And I think a lot of people get flustered with that. Oh, if I could, you know, be like this in this photo or something like, like just cut that out, cut that out. So moving forward, how can we be our the best versions of ourselves now? I think you should definitely, um, you know, tune into the podcast, share this with one person, uh, maybe re-listen to it, take some notes. Any final thoughts on any topics we were just talking about before we round it out for this episode? I would just say that, you know, sometimes we think self-care has to be something huge, but it can be something small, like listening to this episode, like going in and downloading that resource that you mentioned. So yeah, I would just, you know, give yourself a pat on the back. If you're still listening, you did some self-care today. Yay. I also love if people were watching the video, someone who showed me this, where you go like this and you just give yourself like a hug. (gasps) Oh my God, it feels so good. (sighs) Oh my gosh, just cross your hands for the person listening, not watching the video, just cross your hands across your heart and like your fingertips are on each shoulder and just like give yourself a hug and like go go like side to side. It, it's just so cozy. I love it. I, I actually like accidentally gifted myself like a hug the other night when I was taking a nap. I was like, oh yeah, I remember I like this feels so good. It did. So, okay, that's enough. <laughs> self-care 101, let's grow. <laughs> or self-care 1000. So thank you so much for joining us on She's All Over the Place and check out the link below and make sure you enter the giveaway and uh, write comments to us and like, subscribe, and share this with one person on any platform and we really appreciate you and we'll see you next time on She's All Over the Place. Ciao. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you next time. Kiriaki, over and out.